Hello and welcome to DTWGED Prep. Welcome. Okay, welcome. This is the second part of Equations Word Problems 2. Okay, please, please, I encourage that you watch the first part one before you come here. Okay, because this is a bit, a bit, a little harder, but not hard. I'm going to break it down for you. Okay, all right. So please do watch those videos. And um, if this is your first time on this channel, uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and also check our website for summary notes, study guides, free practice questions, the GED formula sheet, all on our website, dtwgedprep.com. Okay, you can also join our Facebook group, wonderful community. In fact, they amaze me, okay, with the kind of support they give to, you know, one another. They amaze me. In fact, you know, sometimes when I'm overwhelmed with, with uh, work and, you know, family, with kids, and I can't answer everyone's, you know, inquiries, everyone in the community, you know, pulls in, drop, you know, drop their hands in and supports you. You know, wonderful community, wonderful people. I haven't, I don't think I've, I've, I've not seen any, like, cussing or, you know, discouragement on the group. I haven't. And I'm glad. I'm happy. I thank God for that. I'm happy. I'm happy for that. Okay. So please join the group. It's going to help you. And also, uh, I'll leave all the links in the video description box of this video. Okay. And if you also want one-on-one -on -one tutoring, please, you can contact me. All right. Please, you know, that's one of the ways I also support myself financially. Financially, You can also contact me for one-on-one -on -one tutoring for sciences, your maths, your G, uh, RLA, social studies. I can tutor you on that. And I have tutored several um, students that have earned their GED. Okay. So for going to the question now, number one says, one number is five less than another. Do you see that? The sum of the two numbers is 171. Find the two numbers. Beautiful. One number, let's make the first number X, is five less than another. One number is, this is means equal to, Five less than another. Let the, another be y. So five less than y, which means five minus y. Okay? I've explained, you know, when you see statement less than, some people, you do five first than minus y. No. It says five less than this. So it means y is greater than five. That's what it means. Okay? So y will come first minus, then you subtract five from uh, 5 from y. So this is our first equation. x equals y minus 5 equal uh, equation 1. That's what this statement means. One number is, that's equal to 5 less than another. Then the second statement says the sum of the two numbers is 171. So it means the two numbers, that's the unknown numbers. That's x plus y is equal to 171. Equation 2. The question says find the two numbers. So let's try to at least first find one. We know here that x is what? y minus 5. Let us just put in the value of x as y minus 5 into this equation. Okay? So because x here is the subject of formula. So we put y minus 5 here. Okay, we have, you know, I've done, um, you know, uh, is it? algebraic simplification and evaluation okay so this is like you have put in the value here to solve okay so whatever we see x in the second equation we put y minus 5 so we have here y minus 5 okay plus y equal to 171 here there's nothing in front of the parentheses so we can drop it down so we have 5 minus y plus y equal to 171 let us take minus 5 here. So we are left here with y plus y equal to 171 plus 5. So y plus y will give us 2y because you know there's an invisible one here, invisible one. So you add, you have 2y. This plus this will give us 176. To get our y, we divide both sides by 2. 
when we divide, what do we get? 176, right? So we have 176 divided by 2. What do we have? Uh, 2 we go in 16 8 times. Uh, we're going to have a 1 remainder in 16 again. It will go 8 times. So we have what? Y is equal to 88. Now, let us find the, uh, what is X? From here, we know X is equal to Y minus 5, right? We have gotten Y as 88, so that will be 88 minus 5. So what would that give us? What's 88 minus 5? That would give us what? 83. So X is equal to 83. Do you see that? We can also test our answer if it's correct. By testing it, we come here to second equation. We do X plus Y. What is X? X is 83 plus 88. What would that give us? 83. Let me just, let's just put it here. Plus 83. This plus this will give us what? 11. Carry 1. 8 plus 8 is 16 plus 1 is 70, 17. You can see that. We are correct. 83 plus 88 is 171. All right. So our answer is correct. So the two numbers, it says find the two numbers. So you write X is 83 and y is 88 okay so that's how you solve that now come to question two it says the sum of three consecutive numbers is 153 okay what is the greatest in the series now consecutive numbers okay let the first number be x all right you know consecutive numbers are you you Continuously add the one, just like one, two, three, four. There's an add addition of one, 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 one. Okay, but first of all, let the first unknown consecutive number be x. All right, then let the second one, okay, because it says the sum. Let the second one so plus the second one be x plus one. Right, the first unknown, the first which is the unknown, let it be x. Then the second one, which is a consecutive, you keep on adding is x plus 1 plus the third consecutive number will be x plus 2. When you add another one, it gives you x plus 2. Okay, so this sum is equal to 153. What is the greatest number in the series? So we have to solve for x from this equation. All right, so we can drop down the parentheses. So we're going to have x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 equal to 153. From here, I can add the x. That's x plus x plus x. That's 3x. You remember, there's an invisible 1 in front of x. So when you add them, you have 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. So plus 3 equal to 153. Okay, let's take 3 to this side. We have 3x equal to 153 minus 3. So we have here 3x will be equal to 150. So when we have 3x equal to 150, what do we do? We find x. To find x, we divide by 3, divide by 3. This cancels out. x is equal to 150 divided by 3. What would that give us? That would give us a 50. Okay? All right? So the question says, what is the greatest number in the series? So we know that x, which is the first number, is 50. The second number is 50 plus 1, which is 51. The third number is what? 50 plus 2, which is 52. So which is the greatest? 52 is the greatest. So your answer is 52. Are you with me? And you notice that when you add 50 plus 51 plus 52, it will give you 53. So which confirms all this as the right numbers. Okay? So this is how you solve for consecutive, uh, the sum of three consecutive numbers. Now, look at this. It says the sum of four consecutive even numbers. Even numbers is 200. Okay? The sum of four consecutive even numbers is 200. Now, so let the first number be x. Now, it's even number. So, you know, even number, there's an addition of 2. So you have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All right? 
Even numbers are numbers that can be divided by two, divisible by two. So you let the first number be x. The second number will then be x plus two. The third number will be x plus four, you know, continuous addition of two. Then the fourth number will be what? x plus six equal to 200. Now we can solve. Let us drop this parenthesis since, you know, it's just summation. So we have x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 6 equal to 200. I can freely open up because the signs in front of the parentheses are all positive. And when the positive multiplies anything in the parentheses, it still remains the same sign. All right, so we add up all this x. We have 4x here, so it gives us 4x. This plus this plus this, that's 2 plus 4, 6, and plus 6, that's 12. So we have 12 equal to 200. So we take 12 to the other side. So we have 4x equal to 200 minus 12. So that's 4x equal to what's 200 minus 12. That will give us 188. So we divide by 4, divide by 4. This would cancel out. X is equal to what? 4 in... 18 will go in 16 four times. Remember, 2, that's 28 to go seven times. <coughs> Sorry. So our answer is 40. X is 47. But it says here, what is the least number? So it should be 47. The least number is 47 because as it goes further, it increases. Are you with me? So the least number here is 47. Okay. All right. So this is our answer. All right. So here, I can see that this question, it shouldn't be 47. Okay, maybe um, the question isn't that correct because the numbers should, should be even numbers. Or if we test it out, let's see. 47, uh, if we add 2 here, that's 49. Add 4 to 47 here. What would that give us? That would give us uh, 51. Add 6 to 47, that will give us 53. If we add up all these numbers, let's see if it will give us 200. I want to know, I just want to confirm if the question is right or wrong. Uh, so, this is 10, that's 20. Carry 2. Oh, 20. Okay. And maybe the formulation of the question isn't that, that right, because these are odd numbers. All right. Okay. Or, I think it should be the sum of four. I think the question should be here. The sum of four consecutive odd numbers. This should be odd. Okay, odd numbers. All right. This is the same way you also work on odd numbers. All right. So it will be x plus x plus two, x plus four, and x plus six. Okay. You add two also for odd numbers. Okay. So that's how. You solve for odd numbers. Okay, the way you solve for even numbers is also the same way you solve for odd numbers. You add twos. Okay, but when it's just normal three consecutive numbers, you're going to be adding one. All right? Okay, so let me clear the screen and let's go to number four. Number four says, Karin is currently three times as old as her daughter. In 10 years, she will be only twice as old as her daughter. How old will her daughter be in 10 years? Now, this question is tricky. Okay, all this question. So I always like, I always uh, prefer to teach uh, my students, I tutor in table, table, table form. Okay, so I draw this table. Okay, I put the two people that we're discussing about. We have Karen and her daughter so we'll put daughter here okay now it says Karen is three is currently that's now so we put now here is currently three times as old as her daughter so if Karen's daughter is d or we can make it let's work on x if Karen's daughter is x or known we don't know the daughter's age x okay Karen is what three times x that's what this means Karen is currently three times as old as her daughter. So her daughter is X. Karen is three times X. So this is the value for Karen. 
Now, in 10 years, we must interpret this in 10 years. This in 10 years is a full statement equation. Do not combine it to this second, this comma. Okay, you see what I mean. In 10 years, in 10 years, what will be the age? Write down the age for Karen in 10 years. In 10 years means it will be 3x plus 10. Her daughter also will be what? X plus 10. This is a representation for in 10 years. Now, in that 10 years, this is the value for Karen in 10 years. This is the value for the daughter in, Ken, in 10 years. In 10 years, Karen will be only twice as old as her daughter. So in this 10 years, which is this value, 3x plus 10, Karen in this 10 years will be equal to twice as old as her daughter in this 10 years. So in this 10 years is what? X plus 10. Do you see this? Okay. So in this 10 years, when Karen is 3X plus 10, Karen, uh, her daughter, um, uh, Karen will be twice as old as her daughter in this 10 years. Okay. So you put it two times what X plus 10. Now we solve for X. Okay. So 3X plus 10 equal to 2 times x, that's 2x, plus 2 times 10, that's 20. So we combine like terms, right? Let's come here. So we have 3x plus 10 equal to 2x plus 20. Let x come here, let 10 come here. So 3x minus coming here becomes negative x. 20, 10 coming here becomes negative 10. So this minus, this gives us x equal to 20 minus 10 gives us what? 10. Okay, so x is 10. So this is the value for the daughter now. Okay, but our question says, how old will her daughter be in 10 years? So we have to come to the 10 years now. All right, so in 10 years, the value for our daughter is x plus 10, and we have gotten the value for x as 10. So we just do a 10 plus 10. So in 10 years, our daughter will be what? 20. You understand me? Okay. And let us check. Let us put in the value for, for x here. So this is 3 times 10 plus 10. So that's 3 times 10 is what? 30 plus 10 is what? 40. So can you see? Is this statement correct? correct? In 10 years, she will be only twice as old as daughter. You can see Karen is twice, is twice of her daughter. Because 2 times 20 gives you what? 40. So our answer is correct. Okay? So this is how you solve for these questions. All right? When you see this question in GED test, please do draw a table. It would really, really help you to go a long way in helping you. Now, question 5. Let's just quickly draw a table. We have John here and his sister. is currently 12 years older than his sister. So John. His sister. All right, so in the now, currently, John is currently 12 years older than his sister. So if his sister is X, John is 12 years older. That's 12 plus X. Okay, all right, or X plus 12. You can state it this way. Okay, John is X plus 12. If his sister is X, then John is 12 years older, which is you are going to add 12 to the sister's age, which the, we know that the sister's age is the unknown, which is what X. Okay. Now it says in five years, let us interpret now. In five years, all right, he will be only three times as old as his sister. All right, let us interpret first in five years. In five years means x plus 12 plus 5. And here, x plus 5. All right, in five years, John's age will be x, 12 plus 5 is what, 17. So x plus 17. And his sister will be what, x plus 5. Then, comma, he will be only three times as old as his sister. So in these five years, when John is x plus 17, 
in the five years. Okay? Equal to, he will be only three times, three in the five years. The value for the, sis the sister's age in five years is x plus five. Three times x plus five. Okay? Three times as old as his, his sister in the five years. So we now have our equation. Now we can solve. Let's first look for x. Okay? When we look for x, then we can always, you know, whatever the question asks us, we can find the answer. So here we have x plus 17 equals to open, it, open up the parentheses. We have 3x, 3 times 5, that's what, 15. So we have x plus 17 equal to, uh, what am I doing? So we can manage this. Let us just collect like terms. Let's take 3 here, bring 17 here. So taking 3 here becomes negative 3x. This is a positive, you know, crossing it becomes negative. This here, we have a positive 15. Taking a positive 17 here becomes a negative 17. Um, this is a 1 here. So a 1 minus, a positive 1 minus 3, that's a negative 2x. Equal to, this would give us a negative, right? A negative 2. So we divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. We cancel. x is equal to 2. Uh, we cancel 2. The negative will cancel 2. So we have a positive 1. So X is one. So the question says, how old is his sister now? So in the now, going to our table, it's just here. So his sister is one year old. Do you see that? <clears throat> his sister is what? One year old. All right. And how do we also check it? It says, if let us check in the five, in the five years. If we come here, put x as 1 so 1 plus 5 is equal to 6 okay we put x as 1 1 plus uh, uh 1 plus 17 is what 18 you can see this 18 this is 6 this he will only be three times you can see this is three times john is three times as old as sister when you do three times six it gives you what 18 so we are correct okay so you can see this method of using a table is quite beneficial all right let us do this the last one so you have to interpret it well you can see the first one says three times this this question says 12 years older you have to add now let us look at this samantha's age is four times that of her niece so we have samantha let's draw a table a niece we have the now Okay, so for the now, Samantha's age is four times that of her niece now. So in the now, if her niece is X, Samantha is four times her niece. So that's four times X. Are you with me? Now it says eight years ago. Eight years ago, that is in the past. All right, eight years ago. Okay, that is in the past. So it means eight years ago to interpret this, it will be four X minus eight are you with me it will be what four x minus eight okay so here now eight years ago for the niece interpretation will be what x minus eight you can see this in this last two questions they say in five years which is in the future we did addition but now, this is taking us to the past. So, 8 years ago, we do what? 4x minus 8. So, this is the interpretation for 8 years ago for Samantha's age and for Denise's age. So, now, 8 years ago, she was 5 times as old as her niece then. So, 5 times. So, Samantha, 8 years ago, which is 4x minus 8, equal to she was 5 times. That's 5 times as old as her niece then. So, at least then, eight years ago, is x minus 8. Okay? So, now we solve for x. So, we have 4x minus 8 equal to 5 times this is 5x. And 5 times this is negative or 40. We bring this here. We take this here. Okay? So, we have 4x minus 5x equal to minus 40. Taking negative this here becomes positive 8. Okay? You know, we brought here, it becomes negative. So, this... Uh, minus, we're going to have a minus 1x equal to a negative 40 
our positive uh, 8 will give us what a negative 32. So you can see here, uh, we have to cancel out. We have to divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. This cancels out because x cannot be in the negative. There's no negative h, okay? So a variable can't be negative. So this or here, we have to cancel out, I mean. All right, sometimes your variable can give you a negative value, but in this case, it's h, you shouldn't have. If you're having a negative, then it means there's a problem with your interpretation, okay? So this negative cancels is negative, so we get 32. 32 divided by 1 is 32. So x is 32. You, you get me? So now, let us check if our answer will be right, okay? Or what's the question? It says, how old is the niece now? So our, our answer is 32, but let's still check. Now, let us do 32 minus 8. What would that give us? What is 32 minus 8? That would give us a, a 24. So this is 24. Now, this is 4 times 32 minus 8. So what is 4 times 32? That gives us 128. And 128 minus 8, that gives us 120. All right, so this is 120, this is 24. So is it, he said, eight years ago, her, she was five times as old as her niece. Let us see if we do five times 24. Five times 120, you can see her answer is correct, okay? So 24 times five is 120. She was five times as old as her niece, okay, which is 120. Okay, 24 times five gives us 120. So we are correct, okay? So thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video. I appreciate you for taking this long. Okay, I know that when you go through all these questions, what problems in the GED would be? You know a breeze for you so you don't need to be scared about the wordings just pick them one one se sentence at a time and interpret them don't be scared about it okay so thank you for staying tuned to the end of this video and uh um please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe to our youtube channel you can check our website for several various resources okay that's at dtwgdprep.com, summary notes, social studies, your RLA, the science, okay, free practice questions. You can also join our Facebook group, wonderful community. All right, you can contact me for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I would leave all links in the description box of this video, okay? And uh, uh, finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Give your life to Christ for he is the way He's the truth and he's the life. He's the one who's going to lead you to heaven at last. And also he's the one who's going to give you peace here on earth. Okay? And, uh, you know, take away all your sorrows, your burdens. Every battle you're going through, he will give you victory. There is victory in Jesus. Okay? Our help is from him. Vain is the help of man. No, our help is in God. But the word of God says, once... Okay, once has God spoken and twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. Come unto him. Also, mercy belongs to God. And he will show you mercy, you know, and give you peace, joy, life, you know, in abundance. Every good thing in abundance. Help you in every battles, battles you know, trying to, you know, uh, you, are, you are bothered about your kids, the way they are going. He's the one. Pray unto him. He would answer your prayers. All right. So I wish you success in your D, in your GED test and also in life. You are destined to win. See you in our next video.